interesting subject, right? Yeah. It's one of those things to talk about. And okay, everybody knows what the rules are. You know, the longer the dick takes runner length, the more torque it makes. The yeah. shorter it is, the more power it makes at higher RPM. And yep. Let's talk a little bit about why that happens. Because <laughs> tuning the intake runner lengths is a really important part of the engine development work. Everything in the engine kind of needs to be set up as a system. So yeah. If you have an intake manifold that was really designed for a low RPM truck engine and you pair that mm -hmm. with a camshaft and a header that was made for a high RPM racing engine, you're gonna kind of get a turd, you know? Yeah. So to make the engine work really well, we mm -hmm. want to develop it in such a way that all those parts are complementary to each other, right? right? So we always talk about the engine being a series of dependent events. The yes. manifold length depends on the rest of the engine being also suited for the RPM range that you want to use. Mm -hmm. But what's really going on is there's a resonant wave. There's literally a powerful pulse of air traveling back and forth the intake runner, and we're trying to harness that positive pressure while the intake valve is open. So what we're really doing is we're playing a game cycle to cycle. So mm -hmm. imagine this column of air that's coming into our engine, and the intake valve closes, mm -hmm. and so now that column of air kind of crashes into it and bounces back the other mm -hmm. way. So when it gets all the way back to the plenum, or in our case with individual throttle bodies, when it gets back to the, the, the world, that's yep. our plenum, right? That pulse changes directions. It turns around and goes back the other way. Now that pulse is traveling at roughly the speed of sound. Okay. So that means that because we know that, we can sort of mathematically predict how long it will take it to go from there and come back. Mm -hmm. So if it gets all the way back and the valve is still closed, eh, it doesn't really help us a whole lot. No. And so what we want is to not only get it back in the right time, but at the right point in the valve motion in our cycle. So, so you get a little supercharging action. That's right. And so we typically target somewhere near bottom dead center where, that, where the valve is pretty far open, mm -hmm. but we're no longer reliant on the piston to help us bring air in. There you go. So we want that high pressure column of air kind of yeah. cramming it in there. So as you can imagine, when the engine's stock, they use a factory intake manifold like this, mm -hmm. and the length of the runner is really long because since the engine RPM is low, mm -hmm. the physical amount of time from when the valve closes to when it goes around and opens again is pretty long. long right. But our, our pulse there is moving it pretty fast, like the speed of sound, so we gotta stretch it out. We gotta have a really long runner so it goes all the way over there and it gets back at the right time. Right. So as we make that runner shorter, for example, and I'm just using rough numbers, for example, the stock manifold here, this is a 2020 to 2022 Ford Godzilla 7.3 huge, liter. look at that. Yep, she's big, yeah. they call her Godzilla. The length of the runner from, from the deck surface of the head mm -hmm. there, so we're not including the port here, right. is roughly 18 inches on the stock one. Now, they make a ton of torque down low and they yeah. peak torque pretty early, down there around 35 to 3,800 RPM, mm -hmm. right? So now when we move to an intake manifold that has lower or shorter runner lengths, mm -hmm. what happens is, the amount of time that it takes for that column of air to go out and come back gets shorter. Yep. So what happens is now, typically that hurts the torque down there at low RPM, Yep. because my pulse came back and the valve wasn't open, or right. it was open at the wrong amount, right? Yep. So in order to make those short ones work, we mm -hmm. really need more engine speed, because it's gonna go there and it's gonna get back, and so right. that we need that valve open again, so we gotta wind that engine up pretty high. Now, that's exactly what we saw when we tested these new individual throttle bodies. Right. These are beautiful. These things are oh, yeah. uh, brought into the States by uh, Brian Wolf at Willis Racing okay. up in Michigan. Um, he gets them from a guy named Roger Higgins at Innovate Machine or mm -hmm. in Innovate Racing Products out of Australia, and they are absolutely brilliant. They the machine really work is perfect. They are yeah. just, everything works so beautifully. And he provided us with trumpets of various lengths. Mm -hmm. So we have the longest ones on there now. Mm -hmm. We got a medium length one here, and then we got a really short one here. Yep. So the difference is from the factory intake, the longest ones give us about nine and a half inches relative that same plane, yep. right? The shortest ones there are only about six and a half inches. Right. And so exactly what we expected. We so ran six, it. six, nine, 18. That's right. So, huh. and, and then in the middle, what we have is kind of like seven and a half, you know, nah. six and a half to Get eight. Rid of that. Yep. <laughs> So, so we know work. what the oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we know what the ultra long ones do. We know what the shortest ones do, and it's exactly what we thought. The shortest ones, mm -hmm. they hurt the torque down low by a pretty oh, yeah. significant it. Yeah. amount, but it really paid off up high. Yep. So, if I was going to build this engine and say have more uh, lift and duration of the camshaft, maybe ported cylinder heads, and I was shorter headers, and I want to turn this thing say seventy five hundred or higher mm -hmm. RPM, I would really want that short runner because right. it's going to pay off big time at high RPM. 
on a completely stock engine like this, eh, that's probably not my first choice. Right. So instead what we're gonna do is use the longest one and we're gonna see how that compares to the factory manifold. I got a feeling it's gonna do pretty good. Just fire it up and find out. as good as the factory down low and then basically as good as the short ones up high. You can't ask for better than that. I know, that's pretty cool. Next time I want to see if we got any blue light. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty much equal to, at 6,000 with the yellow ones climbing, right? So it's gonna be better. Right. But I'm stopping there because it's a fair comparison to the factory. Mm -hmm. But it's almost as good as the factory manifold there. 71 to 56, so it's like 15 foot-pounds is all it gives up. I'll take that to get all that and have that but cool yeah, factor. Yeah, but the peak is almost the same. No, no, see the peak is here at 4,000 versus up here at 4,500 basically. Yeah. yeah, but the total peak, the total number. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's almost the same. A absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's uh, 577 versus five, it's, they are exactly the same. Yeah. So it makes the same just higher. I'm gonna mm -hmm. do it again because it's cool. Oh, hell yeah. And I bet you it gets better. Let's see, we're 140. See if we get any blow by. Yeah. Cubic feet per minute of blow by of just ring, you know, ring blow by. Yeah. So it's one horsepower different there from the last one. Oh, that sucks. Junk. Godzilla. <laughs> I love it. You know, as a kid, I actually really loved Godzilla movies. Did you watch some? Oh, oh hell yeah. I, I love Godzilla. Smog Monster, Mecha Godzilla, all that. So that one kind of reminds me of Mecha Godzilla with, you know, that. Thing on top. It's, it's big like, and angry. Yeah. And like, I think what's cool about this engine is that it's really large in a small package. Like it's basically a small block. Mm -hmm. You know, that thing's only, I think about an inch or an inch and a half bigger than say like a Windsor. Really? But yet it's a really large displacement engine at 445 right. inches. So I think Godzilla was a cool name for it. I know some of the Nissan guys weren't real happy about <laughs> Ford choosing that name for their engine project, but it sort of, it, it works, right? Because yeah. it is a large displacement engine. And uh, it's very docile out of the box because it really was a heavy duty truck engine, right? Mm -hmm. So it's cool. It'll sit there and idle at you know, 750, 800 RPM. It takes really good throttle. So we're actually using the variable cam timing and everything. So it's okay. fully stock engine. We got the Holley ECU running all that stuff. And uh, so it was cool to have a 100% stock configuration. Then we put like the really short runners on there. And then mm -hmm. we came back and we put the really long runners on there. And frankly, no surprises, right? Like it did. Well, I guess there was a couple of surprises, mm -hmm. and one was that the ITBs performed as good as they did. Yeah. I, I really thought that the factory manifold was going to stomp them at super low RPM, and frankly, it didn't. No, fact. it really didn't. I mean, it's like, okay, for what, about 1,000 RPM, it's a little better? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. now the short ones obviously hurt it pretty bad down yeah. low, but yeah. that's sort of, you know, they would also trounce it at 7,500 RPM, so that really wasn't surprising. The long ones though, I didn't really expect them to be as good as they are. Right. You know, they're a little better from like 2,500 RPM to about, oh, 3,000 or 3,200. Mm -hmm. They're within the measurability range there. They're a little better. But after that, they they only give up maybe 10 or 12 or 15 foot pounds in a range of about 1,000 RPM. But after mm -hmm. that, dude, they just sort of take off and run away from the factory manifold. And keep in mind, that's a stock camshaft, still using the variable cam timing, stock, 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 you know? Right. So you put some compression in this thing, you put a camshaft in this thing, it would be, Godzilla would be angry and, and like overwhelmingly awesome. One, it looks super cool, oh, by yeah. the way. I mean, Definitely. it's so much cooler looking than the factory. Like the black truck manifold. Right, yeah. right. It's the same 
peak torque number. It just does it later. And yeah. it, it's like almost, was it 37 horsepower better at, at 6,000 6, RPM. And, and it would continue to get better if I let the RPMs go up. Right. I just wanted it to be a fair test. The stock right. engine's pretty sure. much done by 6,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're like, hey, let's just see what it does to 6,000. But you're right. It actually made the same torque as the stock manifold did. It just bumped it up about five or 600 RPM. Again, mm -hmm. that's what we would expect from a shorter runner. Mm -hmm. What I didn't expect is for it to do so well below that. I knew it was gonna be not as good as the factory mm -hmm. end, but it's so close that I would gladly trade the performance from you know whatever that is, 30, uh, 35, 3,800 is the peak torque for the stock manifold. Yeah. It moved up about five or 600 RPM, and then it just trounces the factory one after that. It's super cool. This is like a, like a total no-brainer, right? I know. I, it I, looks I, cool, it runs good, and basically you bolt it on. I mean, it's, you don't even have to go inside the engine, it's nuts. Well, and I'll tell you what is the most surprising thing about these. So remember, I talked about the uh, the manifolds come from Innovate mm -hmm. over there in Australia yeah. from Roger. Uh, Brian Wolf at Willis Racing Engines brings them into the country for us. and. You know, with ITBs, they can be a pain, to be honest. That traditionally, uh, individual throttle bodies are kind of hard to sync up. They're hard mm -hmm. to make them idle. They're hard to make them repeat. And I wasn't extremely excited about this. I, I kind of figured they would do good at wide open, but I was like, let's see if we'll even be able to get it to idle. And if you can make it idle, will it even take any throttle? Man, the first of all, the machine work on these <laughs> is magic. It's artwork. So congratulations to, to Roger yeah. and those guys that build them. They are flawless. But I did nothing. We took the Holly ECU program that we had for the stock manifold, mm -hmm. we hooked these up, I did nothing, hit the button and it fired up, it idled at 800 or 850 RPM, like it's absolutely simple to make them work. It comes back to idle, it doesn't stumble or stall, oh, no. takes throttle like, crisp. oh man. So crisp. Yeah, like you typically get with ITVs. And so in this case, we got all of the good yeah. and none of the bad. I say it's an A+, plus, so I I'm going to be calling up Ryan asking for a few more of these for some of our other projects, I'll tell you that. Oh, heck yeah. Godzilla for the win! <laughs> what a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen. <laughs>